I was, I've obviously been watching progress and seeing what's going on, but I think a lot of us are past the, the area now where we're teaching how to rise a ball or how to strike a ball or how to hook or do that. Now, there are definitely people in, that room, in this room that need that. And that goes on through your whole brain career. I mean, the Tipperary Senior Hurling Team or the Kilkenny Senior Hurling Team will, strike, will start with a striking drill or they'll start with a, with a lifting drill on the move. It doesn't go away. But that's not why we're here today. Okay? Why we're here today is maybe to just move it on to a, a next level. And am I expecting, or is anybody in the room expecting to be Tipperary or Kilkenny walking out of here to see if it just won't happen? Okay, that's not why we're here. But why we are here, and what we will do, hopefully, is to start to grow a little mentality of why we do things on the field. What, you know, what's going on around us? And you, and, and a lot of this is going to come from you. If I speak all day, it's going to go way over there. A lot, of, a lot of the basis of the day is going to come from the floor. It's going to come from questions from you guys. We're going to put questions on the board so we know where they are and we'll go back to them, okay? So we'll, we'll keep referring back to some of the stuff we have. But Kieran and myself and Charles have been in, in, in context to, to set this up. And really what we were, we were talking about was to, to, to introduce some mentalities into, into hurling and into why we do things. And also maybe to up the tempo a little bit. You guys are at 11 now and you've, your, your graph has been growing and growing and growing and will grow. But it might have tapered at your top level. So now we have to step that up another little bit again, okay? How do we beat Austin? How do we, how do we get past that centre back that was clearing the ball? How do we knuckle down on that centre forward that got the few frees, okay? So that's, that's the next, and that we're all, that, and listen guys, it's a corner forward job to be on top of that as much as it is the centre back's job, okay? When he was under pressure. So we all, that, that we get a team mentality and a club mentality of why and how and when and, a, and a, way of, a kind of a way of playing it. Um, so we're going to be doing a lot of game-based decision-making. Recognizing what's going on in the field around you, and we'll do some clips, maybe to show that as well, if I ever get the thing going. Louis, you might save me on that one. Um, <laughs> and we'll introduce some drills for that. And it's not going to be a full drill-based day now. You're, you're going to have to get some of the drills after the fact. But we're going to talk about, you know, how do we deal with the Denver Centre forward? It's a foot taller than Rudy. Okay. How do we do that? How do we? How do we? Um, how do we uh, cover Kieran because he's now old and slow? You know. How, how do we make up for him? Okay. We have to start thinking about stuff like that. Um, you know. What? How and why we do things. Okay. So would that would that be would that be a fair way of looking at things? Now another thing we're going to do before we start is to ensure that we get some stuff right. And every, absolutely every opinion and every question and everything is valid. We can't, I know you know each other very well and very intimately. So we, can, we, we just have to get past it and don't be afraid to ask questions, okay? Every single person in the room now, you have something in your hurling life that you can't figure out. So it's going, you're going to have to be asking the question. And every question is valid. Just because, just because Jody asks a question that Susan absolutely knows the answer to, doesn't doesn't make the question not valid or are they are they, uh, the, the mindset not valid? So we have to buy into that. Is that fair? That everybody everybody would buy into that. Um, Um, can everybody see the screen or no? Is it not high enough? We can't. Yeah, we just mightn't have that. We mightn't have the height for now. Do we need to go up another chair? Yeah. Need another one? Try a bag, let's. Or try a chair, maybe again. Yeah, we were sorry. 
It just sinks in really big. But anyway, you put a roll across this. Hold on, hold on. Put the same word. Jared, table over there is on your front two legs. Put it early in the front. The table is on the front two legs. Yeah. How many hours does it take to do that? Austin uh, fast break. The Austin fast break. Is the that quick, quick puck outs. Quick puck out. outs. Okay, that's a, that's a tactic, right? Uh -huh. About like dropping the ball into the corner for the corner forwards to run onto it, like an open space, open so, space ball. Open. So, so we're playing the ball to open space. <laughs> yeah. That's a huge tactic, guys. That that's that's the difference maybe between one level and another level. So, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll come back to that one. So, play the ball to open space. Cross field, uh, passes. Are you looking at the screen? No. <laughs> Chicago did that against us one time. Okay, so why did that work? Uh -huh. <coughs> A cross field ball. Did it work? Yeah. <laughs> because we have a tendency to uh, Bunch. To follow the ball a bunch. Okay. So, the, like, a lot of you guys are fairly new. I mean, even eight, seven, eight years is a very new introduction to hurling, and it looks very chaotic and unstructured. But one, two, three, four, five, six. We've identified six tactics in hurling immediately off the bat. So while it's very unstructured, there is a def there's definitely things you can do, and definitely things ways of playing. Is hand passing is said. Anybody know about the Cork hand passing game? Has any of you seen that? It's a it's a very sharp game, but it's very based on runners and, and on hand passing. Very sharp game. But it suited their style of play at the time. Okay. Now at any given time, can this change does this does this change? I mean what's the beauty of hurling? always changes. On every single play, it changes. We might give the day here talking about crossfield ball and how it's very sexy and how it works all the time and how it's the way to go. But Chris Cox could have three lads hanging off him, coming out with a ball some days. Is he going to be able to play a crossfield ball perfectly into the church or into Jody or whoever? He's going to belt it and bang it as hard and as high and as long as he can. Okay? So there's obviously breakdowns in what we try and do. But there's there's ways of doing things and there, there's definite ways of doing things. So there's definitely coach or tactics and there's definitely mindsets. Now one thing about the mindset of doing stuff is, is it going to work every time? We could talk here all day, again, about the crossfield ball in the church, and we might even try it all year. But it only has to work once at the right time. OK? It only has to work once at the right time. Let's, I'm just going to show a little thing here on something that, that the temporary team were maybe particularly good at when they were winning, the, when they won the All-Ireland. 
somebody dropped into the pocket, okay? Now, the very first chap might have won the ball, turned the put over the bar, Sean Carey was in the pocket, didn't matter, okay? The same thing, Pat Work might have won, Betty's man in the, in the second one, put over the bar, didn't matter. But they're, they're definitely on a mindset of it. Those two, in particular, worked. But, and, and, it, and I think, funny enough, at year level, that one of dropping into the pocket just behind the man is actually very important. Because the ball tends to stay in your area a little more than, than these boys. These boys are moving the ball very fast, but at, at, at the level you're at, maybe the ball is staying around you a little bit more. So rather than, rather than diving in and having three and four lads fight for a ball that, that one man could win, that there should be somebody in the pocket and that that's the mindset. Okay? Very simple. Can be done. We're going to do some overhead hurling later and we're going to have one man winning. Do we want the two men under the one ball? Doesn't work, right? So that drop into the pocket maybe is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a good one. And it's a real tactic. And it's a genuine mindset. OK? So what's the message? Tactics in hurling are very real. Okay? And they're, they're in every play. A junior B, a junior C hurling club in the central Indiana came up with six of them in two minutes. Yeah, so they're there. Maybe we will then delight and play that again. Is that possible? Are we able to do that? Very. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? chap that started two weeks ago want to be able to do something that the chap that started nine years ago did? Okay, not possible. Just flat out now. But at least this man is going to now come through the Indiana system with the same mindset as the man that went before him. Okay, and the man that's probably going to be coaching. Alright? Now another thing. What what is a huge part of any tactic or anything you try to do on a on a field? Just name a few things that, that come out. Say it again. Communication. communication is massive, right? So nothing works without communication. You have to drill it. Yeah. Okay. Practice, practice, practice. So practice, right? Build awareness. Be aware of what is, what's going on around you. 
understand your options. Tell me what that means. Hand pass, long cut, short cut. Yeah. Drop on the ground. And is it going to happen every time? Like if Charles drops into the pocket with me and I decide to strike it, is that wrong? Yeah. Not all the time. Right? Not all the time. The option is there. Okay, the option is there. Be aware of what's going on around you. What's another part? What's another part of, of any tech? You know, it doesn't have to be that one. Anything. Yeah. Well, you have commitment. Everyone's got to buy into it. You can't have. You know, Everybody, everybody's got to buy. You can't have a weak link. You can't have someone that doesn't buy into the, the idea. What's another word for that? That's ex Teamwork. exactly what I'm on to. Teamwork. Teamwork. Okay. So buy in. Teamwork. Confidence. Confidence. We're getting very close to the word I'm looking for. Believe. Trust. You have to trust each other. And. The Irish. So it's going to run. I'm a Oh, it is. Trust. You have to trust the person that you're playing with. Yeah. You also have to respect them. I mean, look, we're at a junior B level, we're going to be at a junior A level next year. But is everybody on the team going to do the right thing all the time? Can we turn around and fuck them out of it and think it's okay? We have to absolutely trust each other, we have to respect each other, and we have to know that that mistake was made for a reason, maybe the player was just under pressure. But that the next time we get an opportunity, maybe we'll get it right. Okay? And you might get it right for five years, guys. You might get it right for 10 years. You might be at the end of your playing career and you say, Jesus, now I know <laughs> that it's after clicking with me. Don't worry about that. That's, that's okay. That's okay. That's absolutely okay. But again, we're trying to build an idea and a, and a, and a, and a way of doing things. I, they're not all going to be temporary videos, by the way, but the next one I'm going to show you <laughs> happens to be a temporary one again. Um, it just goes back to, obviously everything worked in, in that last movement, right? But the same, um, a year later, there was a one-man goal. But there's something I want to show you, I'm talking about. Have a look at this one. Listen, I understand that these are very, very, very highly skilled players, and I understand that they're very accomplished. But let's let's have a little think about what went down there. Just hit play again there, and that's, you don't mind. And we're going to we're going to write down. Some of the things you see, I want, it, I want you to shout out. We're not going to pause or any goofy stuff like that, but I want you to shout out what you see in front of you. Long ball. Long ball. Good chance. Who saw that? Who saw that? There was a guy that stepped back. He kind of, what saw Owen Kelly get the ball, he kind of just hit the pocket. Noel McGrath dropped into the pocket immediately. The exact same thing as we looked at earlier on. And it actually screwed up the cart back because he, he dropped with him. And then once he looked, he looked uh, oh, yeah, and he, yeah, yeah. he opened up the whole thing for Kelly. Yeah. The very same thing as we looked at a second ago, but it's so subtle, right? But it opened up everything. It delayed the cart for now the fairness of the cart wing back should have done better. But he got absolutely messed up by, by Noel McGrath, stopping, dropping. So it was a long ball, right? 
What else with the long ball? Anybody else knows anything before the long ball? Or with the long ball? They both didn't crash. One of them went to work, one of them kind of Okay, so how would, how would you do that? Okay. Kelly probably called for it, right? Okay, so there's communication. Would, what else before the long ball? The replay doesn't show it that well, but uh, the ball is coming out uh, towards the, the long ball. Back to them. Start that from the start again there. What else happened with the long ball? Now that was a definite tactic. That tip, tip changed your tactics a little bit. Um, <coughs> so that was a definite tactic. It was. He knew where he was hitting, right? <coughs> what else now? What else? What else? Even though the guy was open, he didn't hesitate. He set the long ball. I mean, he yeah. didn't take any steps. And he had started again. Look at the space in front of the full forward like this. Look at the, if this is in Torres, there was the whole massive amount of space. Just watch the long ball again. And watch from around, around the, from around the 45. Look, look at the amount of space that's in front of the body. Now, would that tactic suit where you draw out your half forward line and you drive it in? Okay, that's a tactic. Okay. So space. <coughs> we identified. We did, who identified the pocket that no no regret dropped into the pocket? I I thought that when I when I saw this I I spotted it immediately, but I thought it was extraordinary. Very simple thing. So, yeah, I mean, he literally just stopped running. Yeah, he stopped running. I mean, he and stopped and then took a couple steps back. I mean, if he stayed running, what was going to happen? He's going to run. His, his man would have buried on Kelly with a shoulder, and it would have stopped there. The other thing that Larry Carver did, just say again, if you don't mind. No, we're not, again, we're not going to go nuts on this, but I want to play this again. Um, Watch Larry Corbett, yeah. Now, Larry Corbett was the hurler of the year for, for probably two years running. But he knew the right man had the ball, and he just, he, he got a little, he took, he took, took himself away. He was looking for it first, right? Yeah, just keeps running. This man is no number two. Right? So, remember, when, we, when we do a bit of that, and when we, when we talk about dropping in the pocket, when we talk about cross field ball, that, okay, these boys are extraordinary athletes. But that there's a mindset, okay? But there's a mindset of it. Fair enough? Yes, sir. Let's say the defensive back overcommitted. He got sucked in. The car, is it number seven or the four? Uh, four. Four was under pressure, though. Because four was on a one. Four, look, you're going to lose a lot of one-on-one -on -one contests. You're, you're, it's going to happen. Look, Kieran is 100 years old now. How many contests is he going to lose this year? You're going to lose a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles. Alright, so I think seven let him down there to tell you the truth. Seven was a bad time. Seven should just nail on Kelly took the point. Or give the way to free and take let him take the point. Is that a tactic? Yes. <laughs> in thirteen aside, what kills you in thirteen aside hurdles? Space and space absolutely kills you in thirteen aside hurdle, correct. But what does space lead to? Mismatch. Goals. Yeah, goals and kill you. Goals and kill you. <coughs> so, you know, do we give away goals? Make it your life's ambition for the rest of your hurling career and everybody in this club not to give away goals. Yeah? You can let them score 15 points in a 13 side game. Don't let them get three goals. Okay? If you give away three goals in most games, you're going to lose. What she scored in very Three goals, right? Um, but uh, if you give away goals, you're, you're going to be in trouble. Now, if you score goals, which is, I suppose I do have a bit of an attack and bias. Uh, you know, there's another day I'll come. We'll do a lot more defensive stuff, and we will do some defensive stuff outside. But um, the, the big proponent of creating space, creating style to use that space, and then the scores will come. But guys, don't worry about making mistakes. Don't worry that you take the wrong option. If we go out and we, pack, we practice that pocket and Churchy doesn't give it to Peacock, don't worry about it. Right? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah?
that was my challenge. I was like, you know what, I always have to possess the ball to the right wing. Put him away from the ball to the right wing. That's what that's what they are called over in there in the corner. You came away from all cutting. Get more cutting in space. Tuesday, everyone is just that. You're going to try and take the ball out there that has the ball. Sometimes the right option is coming away from the map of the ball. It creates space. Simple as things. No. You have to be a horror, they have to be a really good a good horror to create space. Be pure dog and worker, right? Can we, there's no excuse for not working hard. If you work real hard and you get to the ball and you stick the handle of the horror in your belly when you get there, so be it, that's that's who you are, dude. But you should be absolutely dead dog tired after a half an hour of hurling, and you should be absolutely dead dog tired after the hour. And that I think would it be fair to say that that's maybe one of the attractions of it? Very physical game, very very good aerobically and all the rest of it. Okay? Okay, that's, that's the end of my presentation, guys. Thanks for coming. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we've identified, we've identified a few, we've identified a few tactics. You're going to break up into groups of maybe, how many here, many people? 34. 34. How many groups would be, say, five, five, seven. let's do, yeah. Let's do five groups of sevens, actually. Take a sheet out of here, take a marker, okay? And find a table or find something. Now, one thing, and again, we have to have complete another round of feet and all the rest of it. I want to say two defensive players and, and three offensive players in each group or the other way around. Don't have all the defense go to one section and all the offense go to the other section. Just split yourselves up. If you're not sure what you are, find a buddy. <laughs> okay? Take the sheets and go to a wall. This is the We can stay standing or just, just come in a little bit and we don't want to be sitting all day. So, we're going to go to the last here for for uh, give us give us your best defensive play here and have somebody as a spokesman. Offensive, yeah. Uh, uh, what is the give and go? Basically, it's it's kind of universal in all sports, really. I mean, obviously basketball, but uh, you know, hand pass or or short strike maybe to to uh, a nearby open teammate and then run with them and give them an option as they make a move. Okay. What's the key points in that? Key points in a kind of a give and go game? Movement, communication. Movement, communication. Good hand pass. Feel awareness. Yeah, get it right. Yeah. Hand passes break down a lot, guys, so you have to get that right now. But I, I actually looked at your game last night. Um, I looked at your Aston game last night, and you got a couple of great scores with a short hand pass, and then it was forced to take your score. So there was, there was some very, very good elements in that. So, give and go is give and go is an offensive yeah. tactic, and it's you need hard work, communication, and good execution. All right. Defensive one over here. Give me your best one for now. Uh, we're going to start with the newly named Shadow and Switch. Okay, that's new. <laughs> <laughs> we um we see Karan do this a lot, where he may not mark directly up on his man, but play back a little. So um, more than one kind of shadowing where the, the action is moving. Um, and then at times when necessary, switch marks cleanly when you've got speed differential or things like that. So switching as in actually switching this man off of a really quick guy or this man off of a really right, tall in the, guy. Right, in the midst of potential play. Okay, so it's a tactic to say to identify what the hell's going on around you and take Cox off of a six foot seven guy, right? Appropriate? <laughs> you can handle them? <laughs> okay. So what would why why would Kieran get away with shadow on why 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 would he get away with shadowing? Or, or, huh? He reads the game. He reads, reads the game. Okay. And he doesn't drop it. <laughs> he does drop it. <laughs> but yeah, he, he reads the game very well. I think we can all agree on that, right? He re he reads what's going on in front of him. Now, is he going to be able to read it as well this year as he did three years ago? 
because he's old and slow, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe he won't, but maybe he won't get away with that as easy this year, you know? Okay? Or if he, if, if he got caught with that car plaid, say, that played with Austin, they said the forward fella, he couldn't do it on him because your man would be too sharp for, you know, he, he's a good ball player himself. We actually talked about that before the game, yeah. that strategy. Yeah. You played that fella fine. The center, I think the center back gave you fits. The center forward was a good player, but I think the center back gave you fits. Yeah. Center forward actually did nothing in that game. No. Yeah. yeah the, yeah. Center back done an amount of order in that game. Yeah. And, you know, I, I had that on the laptop actually. Again, I was kind of looking at it last night. Um, that's fine. We won't get hung up in two minutes. Over here, you were at what? Uh, offense or defense? Offense. Offense. Okay, speak up now, nice and loud. Uh, well, we had the give and go, but they already went over that, so we'll go to the pull out. Um, it was basically a, a long ball um, to the uh, half back and uh, or full back or full forward. I'm sorry. Uh, he gets it, and instead of going towards the goal, he goes away to the goal, uh, away from his man, and hits it. Why would that be a very good tactic in 13 aside? Space. 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 Yeah, you're going to have to, I know you get playing on different fields and that just because of the level you're at, but or, you know, you get maybe put, remember like one, when you played Denver it was tiny, when you played Austin it was huge, but you're going to have to start using this 13 aside uh, concept. I know you've played nothing else, we're used to 15 aside as we grew up, but 13 aside can be exploited, huge exploitation in 13 aside if you get the tactics right. And that's a tactic, playing on the end line, all the space in front of you, you just saw it at the tip, set up. Playing on the end line, all the space in front of you, you win the ball and then you have an option to go that way, that way, or turn. If you if you beat somebody in the inside back line and 13 aside, we should be scored. Okay? But that's a tactic, right? Defense over here or offense? Yeah, offense. Offense against okay, we'll go defense here in the middle, so. Nice and loud. Well our uh it was six, which were cheapers over here at first. <laughs> uh, but well, you know, when you the ball, uh, what Chris talks about a lot is on defense, the ball's coming, attack the first one to it, beat your man to it, and you get the first, get a good first touch, and you stop from scoring that way. What does attacking the ball do for you? Gets you possession. Gets you possession, right? But it, what else does it do for you? Confidence. Gives you confidence, right? Intensity. Brings the band. Okay, you now, but I, that's kind of where I'm angling. If you're if you're attacking the ball all the time, you're you're most of the time dictating what's going on. You're dictating the play then. And we'll work a bit when we go in on body positions and body angles and using some of the things that uh, you're going to give you to dictate what's going on around you. All right. There's no point in being six foot and 230 pounds, 220 pounds <laughs> if you're not going to use it. Okay? Again, there's no point in being short and quick if you're not going to use that. There's no point in being hugely athletic if you're not going to use it. So use your strengths. And one of the strengths would be attacking the ball, dictate what's going on. Okay? Good play. Offense in the corner. Well, one of our first ones was uh, just go straight for goal. Get the ball in your hand, get possession, and then go run straight to that, to that goal. Right? Why would that be a really good tactic, Ian? Uh, the decisiveness that you're, if you're forcing the defense to make a decision against you. Yeah, you're dictated again and you're forcing what's going on. It frightens the shadow of the defenders. Yeah. Tracy, what was your favorite pair of playing quarterback? You. <laughs> <laughs> when lads are pouring down on you, what happens? It's hard to go for you. you <laughs> you don't know what, what you should go for the man, go for the ball. You, you're indecisive, basically. You know? If he's making you do what you don't want to do, if he's taking you on. And we're going to do that. That's one of the points that Kieran and I have laid out. That one of the things we're going to do today is when somebody's running at us, what do we do? Panic? <laughs> That's a tactic. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's one of the things we're going to do. Yes, in the corner. Uh, all I was going to say was you know, the other benefit of the go for goal is yeah. like you said, if someone's going for goal and you're the defense, you're going to bury them. Yeah. So going for goal and 
making sure is that you're going to get points. Yeah. You're either going to three, you're getting a point over the bar. You're getting the goal. You're getting a point or a wide. Okay, that can happen too. But there's a very good chance that they have to make a decision and maybe foul you, or no, they could take it off you driving up the field. But, that's, but there is a good chance of a freeze. Like it is. Look, we're playing an aggressive game, right? Anybody here afraid of the aggression side of it or doesn't like it too much? I, mean, I know. You don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, we're in this room. He's our hitman. That's our hitman speaking, by the way. Yeah, we're we're yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll get you. We'll get you in the club. <laughs> but uh, that's a really good one, right? Again, I keep going back to the thirteen aside thing, guys. Going for goal. What did we decide earlier on as a club we were going to do for the rest of our lives? Not give up goals. Not give up goals. So on the other side of things as well, going for goal is a good tactic. Um, I, I don't like bringing in negatives, but what's the what's the worst thing you can do when you're going for goal? Just force it. Huh? Force it. Force it. Okay. Miss. Um, miss. <laughs> What's the worst thing that can happen if you're trying to work a goal? You miss an opportunity for points? Or yeah, that's, that, that's, that certainly happens. Here's our goal, right? That's the one we're going for. We're the blue team. Dropping into all his hands. Everybody. You often see that? Oh, yeah. Um, from 70s or set plays or, or when, you, when you come under pressure, what happens? Everybody goes back. You bunch up the whole thing. And now you're becoming defenders as well as attackers. If you ever have to work a goal, or again, now we're going to talk about this later maybe as well, or if we don't do it today, there'll be other days. But like from 70s and from set plays, if we all go in like a big heap of shite, that's exactly what we are. A big heap of shite in front of the goal. How do you spell that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I was going to say, you just flood the box and you make no options outside. Say it again? You're flooding the box and you just have no option to yeah. side. Yeah, there's only one option on this. And that's a defensive option. You know, the defender is way, you might get lucky, but the defender is way in charge here. So if we are going for goal, open up the play. Keep your structure. Don't panic. Keep your structure. You're going to hear the word structure a lot. Keep your structure. Keep your position. What did Tracy say to Ireland about Larry Carbon? He, he made a run that opened up the whole thing. Same thing with Noel McGrath, a bit of a thing we looked at, okay? Right, just come back into your base maybe again. Can everybody see the one in the middle there, the one I'm writing on in the middle, is that okay? Yeah? You guys go. Hey, Colin, you missed one. We got, we got one more defense and they didn't go. Oh, I'm so sorry. Speak up. Sorry, guys. I thought you were on one. Give me, sorry, guys. Give me the defense that's on there. We missed one here at the middle. I was just going to say, they were talking about the go for goal, which is pretty much countered with the Hacky Jody defense. Yeah, this is okay. What's the Hacky Jody defense? That's pretty much his number one tactic is to get the ball and just head down and go straight for goal, yeah. and sometimes you don't want to give up that goal, so you got to take him out just to let. It's a tactic, not a great tactic, it's more of a last ditch. And what did, we do, what did we agree for the rest of our lives we're going to do as a club? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 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 That we already did that. We're going to, I'm, going, I'm going to get Jody to show me the uh, flying uh, strike when my nose is on the ground my ass is in the air and it goes up and down. I don't know how that one goes. Um, okay. Can somebody get that thing going in there? Um, who saw the 2011 All Ireland, the one that Kenny just beat to Yeah. Quite a few people in the room. You saw, how many you saw the 2010 All Ireland? Okay. So, two same teams, two very, very similar skill levels. What happened in 2011? Someone, and this is not coming from me or Tracy now. I want you to, well, I want you to speak up about the 2011 All Ireland. No one got a red card. Uh, no one got a red card. Okay, that's a good tactic. What <laughs> <laughs> team was hungry? Hunger was huge, right? Who was hungry? Just yeah. 
<laughs> okay, what, what, what else was a huge tactic in the 2011 All Ireland? There's no right or wrong answer on that, don't spell it. But there are some very definitive patterns of play in the 2011 All Ireland. It's fine. Well, here, here, here's one of them. This happened. This particular play happened about this particular play happened about six times in the first 20 minutes of the 2011 All Ireland. Most very similar play, right? Okay, This happened, trust me, if you, if you don't remember, this happened at least six times in the first uh, in the first 20 minutes of the game. Apart from the spectacular catch, what did he do? Yeah. Cross, 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 cross. Now, that, now that your memory is jogged on it, do you remember this happened? Every single... Tommy Walsh should have got man in the match in the first 20 minutes of that game. But he had zero thought in his mind other than one thing. Cross. He, he, he never even looked, guys, trust me. He never looked. This was worked out. Henry Shefflin. Was left wing forward. Tommy Walsh. Was right wing back. Tipperary had a rookie playing on Shefflin, which was obviously a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> But, he was, and he was sharp, he was sharp at the Now, Henry should listen guys, Henry Shepard is one of the greatest players in my lifetime and probably in the history of Ireland, if, he, if he's better than Walsh. But, there was absolutely no doubt as to where that ball was going every single time. If I would urge you to go and look at the game again and, 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 and watch it. You know, Shepard actually missed three or four points from playing the same game. But he had them in his, on his stick. It was a definitive tactic. And it, it was massive. It was absolutely massive for him. And it, it, when it, no, Tipperary brought somebody over on Sheffield and Big Party Manor, it, the, the, it stopped. He stopped in Portland. But it was an absolute out and out tactic. Okay? Anybody else any, remember any, any other tactics in the 2011 Ireland? The speed and play, yeah. Now, in fairness, both of them have speed, but they, they definitely paid at an unreal pace. They upped the intensity. I think that would come into the hunger thing. Before Colombia said that noise on the table, like, do you understand why that actually works, the crossfield ball? Because the defender has to play two goals out of his hand, so once you cross the ball, it's, it's almost 90% of the forwards are going to win that ball. Because it's played to, to, his, to his front side to where the defender can get a good view of the ball. And if he risks playing him in front, Tommy Walsh would, would, would see that he would hit the ball, the ball over the top and it would be a goal. Yeah. So it does two things the fact that you do that cross field ball. It, it, it makes the defender scared and it gives the, the attacking player probably almost a 100% chance of getting a point. Speak up now, guys. Some of you can't hear. It also means when the wing back actually gets the ball, Tommy Walsh, Henry Shefflin already has a yard on his marker because he knows he knows it's coming. He knows it's coming. He knows it's coming. Now, they explained it in more detail. And he was shorter than him. No, he was shorter than him. Like, honestly, Shefflin didn't have his greatest year last year, but they identified a strength immediately. They identified a strength during the week, and they identified it. The more than he have from Saturday to Sunday to identify what's going on in your playoffs, they identified a strength. And they, at, like, the best one, the best hurler maybe of all time decided, I know nothing else, I'm going to pump ball here until it stops working. And he did it. Okay? 
Now they would have adjusted on the fly. And the other thing is, you see, the, what, what the likes of Sheffield and what you guys should be doing, obviously movement is huge, so I, 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 you guys have no excuse for not working hard, okay? You're not going to be Henry Sheffield, but you can work hard. Sheffield would bring his man here. And an acre. You see, Tommy's putting it into the space. He's not actually, he's, nobody's hitting pinpoint passes. They're putting it into areas and, and, and places. The other thing about a crossfield ball, which I know James is on about as well, is it gets back turning and you know, they don't know where it's going to go, or, you know, they just, it, 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 people like hurling in straight lines, or attacking in straight lines, or defending in straight lines, but if they have to twist and turn and get them, get them torn around, that's why forwards really can dictate stuff, you know. The other thing is, a forward, a back has to be right 100% of the time. A forward only has to be right 30% of the time. You know what I mean? But if he's getting to that sort of supply, and if he decide that this thing moving forward could work for you, think about it heavily. Because it, it definitely it does work. Poor old uncle is going to take up now. Uh, where's my phone? I was watching the Austin game. Duncan, you're in trouble here now. Um, I was watching the Austin game. Can you see where the hell I put Austin game? Give me more than the passion. Put the time. I put the time of this on my phone. Okay. Now, again, I don't mean. Sorry, Duncan. <laughs> sorry. Hit the lights there. If yeah, Duncan wins the ball here, what happens? Pause that then. Okay. We work the ball into an area that we wanted, it, right? And what what option was taken? Speak up for yourself, Doug, if you want. I just hit it immediately. I didn't even really think about it. Okay. Back to 948, then up a second again. So I want you to come up with the solution to what could have happened here. Just get a handy old line ball. <laughs> old man takes it. Now we have it where we want it. Watch now, watch, watch, watch. Okay, pause that there. So what, what was another option, guys? He could have rolled inside. He could have gone to strong side. He could have done what? He could have rolled inside, centered the ball. He could have rolled inside, he could have. That's his strong side, too. He, he, he could have turned out to his strong side, right? At that point, he could have gone for the pocket, because there was a bunch of space in the middle. So we've just won the ball here now. Don't get it, Henry Chef. <laughs> right? And here's Jody, and here's the church, right? And our defenders around them. And here's the ball. So Duncan's just won the ball, all right? So this man says he could have he gone this way, right? Did he have room here? Yes. Oh, yeah. OK, absolutely did have room, right? When he decided to strike it, there was only two options. Well, to me, there was the two options. One was just turn the boat over the bar, right? That's a very good option. Well, what was the other option? Church. I had I was on the out I had open space on the outside of my You were there. there. Yeah. Now would that be the ideal one? Just a matter of interest? No. no. It would work, but it would you're again you're going into spaces maybe where you don't want to. Anybody else? Cross the middle. Cross, Louis? Cross it to the other man. It was an absolute acre of space here. And he's not going too far away from the goal doing that. Okay? And even even with even with Jody getting sucked in here, it's going to an area where it's going back into trouble. Like in fairness say it like he he didn't look back in nowhere really, you know. He didn't look back with the goalie. Even if it came off, the back man was in, in the best position to win it after it was struck. Okay? When you when you did what you did. Here on the 21 or was the ball for that. Let's go back to that again now. Look at, again, just look at the space. Look at the space that was available to it. Look at the space now, look at the space. Stop again now. 
Now, Jody and Church, you might, the more I look at it, you're going to get the hammer now. <laughs> we he actually, each other. you took yourselves into an area where all you were doing as well maybe was clogging it up. Plus, if Church needs a hand, I'm sure he'll ask you for joy. Space over here. Okay? At least, if Duncan did what he did, it was one on one. Okay? I think definitely your spot was maybe in the position you left rather than where you went. Okay? It's okay. <laughs> the game right there. Yeah. <laughs> I had um, I, I brought up the Denver game as well, but I forgot to save it. And like, no matter what we talk about here today and all the fancy talk that we do, what won the game against Denver? Goals. Goals. Do you remember the goal when the goal went back in? What won it? Simple bit of hard work. It was nothing only hard work. Ball went in. You won it. He struck. He went shot. Shot for goal. Didn't work out, but she followed in and he, and he tapped the ball into the net when the goalie had it. Just pure out and out hard work. So all the waffle that you're going to get today can never be taken over from hard work. Okay? Don't 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 sweat some of the things we're talking about. Just work hard. <laughs> I mean, this is good. I mean, this is what I mean. Just said to Jody a second ago. I mean, we don't you know analyze a game like this. We don't talk about this right. necessarily. Um, yeah. So this is no, we realize those this. options. Yeah. yeah, we need. I mean, this is. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, don't, yeah, don't panic. Don't, don't, definitely don't panic. Because again, we are what we are. But if you make a mistake in a drill, I have a cardinal rule. Do not make a second one. Okay? Recover from what you've just done. If you drive it, if we're doing pairs and you drive it over somebody's head, use it as a training tool. The man that's got over his head, turn, wheel, sprint, get it, get it back into play. It's a fitness game at the end of it. Okay? We're going to train for an hour and a half most evenings. Give it everything for the hour and a half. But don't, you know, the fellas are, jeez, oh, Trace after driving over here again. I'm going to go off and get it. Then I'm going to try and lift it with my foot, tap it up my foot, and it goes over there. What's happening now at this stage? James lighting up a smoke and <laughs> the whole thing is broken down. Okay? That never <laughs> so don't make two mistakes, right? That fair? We'll do that for the rest of the day? For the rest of the summer? Yeah, if we make a mistake, we correct it properly. I'm going to finish with Anthony Daly because he's smarter than I am and he's six feet. <laughs> but uh, another thing I'd like to get you into out here and again for the rest of the summer just faster hands, maybe faster thought, faster speed of, speed of head, speed of hand. Listen. Again, we're not going to be able to do it in all the grade as Tommy was, but that's not what I'm expecting you. But Ian Hurt is fast. He knows what it is. He can get faster. Right? Jody's fast. He knows where he can go. Okay? Tristan knows where he can step. Just get faster thought, faster hands, faster work. And it's more important outside the training to be doing that. That's if you're poking against the wall or if you're hitting between each other from time to time. Do it faster, okay? Anyone, my mother, can get a horror and poke it from here to Duncan, all day, and she can throw it and get it back. But if you ask her to up the tempo as well, then it becomes different, okay? Take your two steps and strike the ball. So, if the second golden rule is, we'll get a bit faster. Now, not to the detriment of what you're trying to learn. Okay, learn it first, then increase. You know your own speed, right? And don't hold back. If you feel you can go faster, faster hands, do it. Faster thought, do it. Okay. So is that all agreed? Are we all all on board with that one? This is this lunatic here now. Uh, what are we doing? Oh yeah. This this is more important to listen nearly than even watch. Move it faster, faster, faster. You couldn't shout faster enough in the hours training. You could not. I mean, I remember being absolutely dogged by the mad fleff and feet, like dogged. Like my I, my hurling was just too slow. I was. Like good old hands, but two slow hands. And he just drove me cuckoo. I cursed him more nights to myself, but he quickened me enough to be able to cope at that level. I wouldn't have, I definitely wouldn't have lasted uh, like at that level on, 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 until I got that trainer. And he brought me on tons, I'd have to say tons. Just my striking got all that bit quicker. And every time then I went to the alleys myself, or went to a wall myself, I practiced doing things quicker all the time. Where we go? Second ball is in. Now can we keep it off the ground? We're going up to a minute. Second ball is in. This can be a that's good, lads. That's good. That's good standard, lads. A good standard of hand passing out. It's good. Concentration is good. Third ball will be some fun, though. Third ball will be real fun. You'll be the crowd for the third ball, lads. This group. Be ready. I'll be calling you in a sec. Okay, keep at it. Keep concentrating. Minute and a half done. I do normally about four or five minutes of this, lads. Because normally it's falling all over the place. These boys, in fairness to them, now are well tuned. It's the camera, it's a... Are we ready? Are we ready? Fourth ball when they gone past, G? Fourth ball, ball. third ball, third ball. Where you go? Ready, lads? Four, third ball is in now, third ball is in. Third ball is in, you gotta be ready. On your toes, on your toes. Stay in there now, stay in there. Concentrate, third ball. It's excellent, boys, it's excellent. It's excellent, here, here, we're on again. Keep looking behind you because there'll be a ball coming. Keep looking behind you. Are them boys under any doubt? Talk, 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 talk. You gotta keep them talking, keep tuned in. Keep watching behind you, they'll be. Okay, lads, well done. If you can go full pelt 
at a ball coming at you at full pelt and control it first time to your hand to me that's the essence of it if you can go as fast as you can go at that ball and the ball is coming as fast as it can go and you can take it without breaking stride you're three quarters of the way there like striking you can improve like getting fellas to, to, to take that leap of faith to go to the ball would that be a fair way of heading off to the pizzas now and heading into the room? <laughs> <laughs> faster, faster, faster. <laughs> but guys, one other point on that. Seriously, though, you're fast and them boys fast is maybe slightly different. Don't do it to the detriment of your hurling, but don't not do it to the detriment of your hurling. Right? Take it to where you can. Make plenty of mistakes. Right? Everybody wants to see loads of mistakes. <laughs> okay, and then what do we do? We recover. Alright,